All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So there was an interesting dialogue happening early this morning. Uh, Jeff Grubb, who is a gaming industry um, journalist, and I, I think you can consider him a, an insider also because uh, he has been privy to certain knowledge um, before, before other people get to it. And I believe he's leaked a certain amount of things and he's... Um, yeah, he's divulged, uh, I think, a decent amount of information and has a good track record with it. So I think you can consider him an, an insider. So while he was on a, on, on a podcast, uh, he said that Xbox management was not happy with the state of Xbox. He said they were actually upset about the state of Xbox. Um, he also said, which, what, which is what most people are talking about today, is that Hi-Fi Rush fell short of commercial and sales expectations. Now, when he said that, I didn't make a video earlier because I didn't think that particular statement made much sense. I know Xbox is a screw up and they're like kind of ditzy, but I'm like, Xbox, Xbox cannot be expecting games to go into Game Pass and also have this, this high expectation to also sell games a la carte. I'm like, there's no way they have expectations for both. Maybe you can have expectations for both, but your sales expectations clearly have to be much lower than your Game Pass uh, expectations and whatever you, whatever you use to measure all this stuff, right? Because it's an oxymoron to expect people to buy a game when the literal identity of Xbox is Game Pass. X, and I mean no slight in this, but that's literally, that's what Xbox is all about at this point. It's Game Pass. So that's a, that, is, that is what they are. That's their whole identity. Everything about them. Nintendo has an identity for making a certain type of game. PlayStation has an identity for making a certain type of game, whether you consider, consider those things good or bad, but they have an identity. Xbox doesn't have an identity for making a certain type of game anymore at this current time. Their identity is a subscription service. That is what they are, right? And people say it's, it's one of the best deals ever. But you have to acknowledge that's really what their identity is. Cool. With Nothing wrong with that if, if that's the route and strategy they choose to go down. Now, uh, Aaron Greenberg did reply to this, and he said that Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with the team at Tango Gameworks, uh, the, what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. So Aaron Greenberg denying that, that statement from, from Jeff Grubb. Now, you can, you can choose to believe uh, you know, Aaron Greenberg or you could choose to believe Jeff Grubb, whatever. I'm not going to argue with Aaron Greenberg or argue with anybody because my thing is he's the exec. He has the numbers. He has, even though the, because the burden of proof is, is really on Jeff Grubb. You know, he, ha, he claims he has those sources and connections and all that stuff. It's really up to Jeff Grubb to, to prove it since he made the statement. Aaron Greenberg doesn't really have to, he, he's refuted it. He's denied it. He doesn't really have to prove anything. And Xbox, that's kind of what they've been on. They don't share sales numbers. They, they, they have said it's all about player engagement, monthly active users, subscription numbers, and, and, and all that stuff. But even when it, but it's not even like they really share those numbers all that much. They, they, they don't even share that enough, honestly, right? They don't like to talk about sales because if they, let's be real, if they talked about sales, it doesn't make them look good. That's why they abandoned talking about sales. I mean, there's, their games weren't selling. That's literally the reason their games not selling is literally the reason why they don't talk about sales and honestly why, why Game Pass even exists today. So I don't argue with execs who have the numbers, the metrics. Um, you know, I can't say, oh, Jeff Grubb, is, I mean, uh, I can't say Aaron Greenberg, oh, you're wrong. No, he has the numbers. He has the tele telemetry, the, the numbers. He has all that info. I don't. So, hey, if he says it, what can I do but I guess believe him, right? Or choose, or choose not to, but he has the, the empirical data. Now, Jeff Grubb replied, um, and 
pretty much what he, some people are saying he's backtracking now, but he said, I was just trying to say that I heard Hi-Fi Rush didn't make the money uh, it was expected to make. But to be clear, I don't know how Microsoft measures success. This was just a small passing statement in a larger conversation. It, was, it, was meant to, it wasn't meant to make people worry about Hi-Fi Rush. So some people are saying now he's backtracking or he's copying a plea, whatever. Believe what you, believe what you want to believe. But there is something to the fact that Microsoft won't divulge sales numbers ever. Because you can avoid conversation like this completely if you would just say how your games are doing. And the thing is, sales are an accolade that can be used to market your game. Right? I don't, I don't know if people really realize this because there's always the, the conversation, oh, oh as, a, as a consumer, why are you talking about sales? Sales do matter. And a lot of people try to, try to deny that, but they absolutely matter. You should care what a, what a, you should care about what your platform of choice sells, how well it's selling, and your, your favorite games that you care about, you should care about how they're, how they're selling because how they sell determines the, f the future of it. All the time, you know, we hear about Xbox guys. Oh, why are why didn't we get a sequel to Rise? Why didn't we get a sequel to Sunset Overdrive? Why didn't we get a sequel to insert whatever you know game from last generation that they didn't get a sequel to? There's there's a bunch of them, right? Um, there's there's like I can't, I'm uh, Recore, right? Recore, Sunset Overdrive, Rise, there's, there's, uh, Quantum Break. All these games came out in one generation. And they never got a sequel. They never got a sequel for it. And, the, and you can't say sales don't matter, but also ask the question, why didn't we get a sequel for this? Because of the sales. That's, that's exactly the reason you didn't get a sequel for it. So people who say sales don't matter, but ask these questions, that's an oxymoron. That's, that's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. You should care about sales. You don't think if, if Quantum Break, Recore, or Rise sold 10, 15 million or whatever, that you would have a, you, you would have had a sequel, you would have been had a sequel if, if those games sold when they came out. But they didn't. You can't, you can't say you don't care about, uh, you don't care about sales, but you're upset when a certain platform gets exclusive, an exclusive uh, third party g game to themselves. You can't say you don't care about sales but then get upset when your platform, when, when games are performing better on another platform because that platform is the lead console and they are developing, third parties are developing games for that lead console first and, you're, and, and that, other, that other platform is a second thought. That all ties, ties into sales. You, you like, Deals, when deals are made and all that stuff, that all ties into sales. So you can't say you don't care and also complain about exclusivity. Also uh, complain about why games aren't, aren't performing well on your platform and why others are and why other uh, third party uh, publishers and developers are skipping your platform, but going also going to Netflix and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is getting it except you. All of that ties into sales and, and dominating the market and being the market leader. It's no coincidence that whoever is the market leader and, and you know, dominating in sales software and hardware gets the preference, gets, you know, treated better. It's, it's related because all these, all these, everybody in the gaming industry, the developers and the publishers, they care about the money. So, yeah, you get, you get priority. That, that's how it works. Now, I think my, Microsoft, the thing is, Microsoft, you can use, I don't think they realize that micro, X, Xbox is like marketing sucks to begin with. Everybody says that, even, even Xbox fans, it sucks. I don't know if, if people realize that sales are also accolades. You don't think that sales play a part in like award shows, like as far as no, nominations go? I'm not saying that's that's like a huge part of the pie when it comes to considering, but yeah, it's it's part of it. It's it's of of course the reception from gamers and critics, um, and also 
developers, you know, your, their peers and colleagues, but it's also how good did the, how good did the, did the game sell? Of course, something like Elden Ring, yeah, it was critically acclaimed, but it was also a hit commercially and sales-wise. That works to your benefit because it's, it's used almost as marketing and, and advertising when a game sells so much. It, it, it pulls people's attention. People want to know, why is this game selling so much? This, this game is it. It literally draws people, people's attention. God of War selling. I don't even remember what Rag, Ragnarok's, Ragnarok's number was. It sold something freaking crazy. That grabs, pe grabs people's attention. Um, Tears of the Kingdom is about to come out in a few weeks. You don't think, you don't think like those numbers, not that you know, Zelda needs any more marketing than it does, but when that game could probably come out and sell 10 million in three days. That's, that's a form of marketing when you brag about your sales numbers. It's an accolade. It's no different than when you see those, uh, like the accolade trailers, and they, they show you, oh, GameSpot gave our game a, a, a 9, and IGN gave it a 10 and all that shit. Those trailers, those are accolade trailers, sales can do the same, literally do the same thing. It helps promote a game. And being that Xbox doesn't do that, I think it actually hurts them. It's, it's been hurting them. But I, I know they're in a, like a, a precarious situation because, yeah, we can't reveal our numbers because they make, make us look bad. But if we, if, you know, but also not revealing our numbers, we're also not really promoting our games to be, to be these dominant games that everybody wants to play. Because Hi-Fi Rush, it was played by 2 million people. That don't mean shit. That literally doesn't mean anything. It was played by two, min, two million people. That doesn't even, that doesn't even mean that two, two million people downloaded it. Doesn't even mean that. Doesn't mean that two million people bought it. These random and obs obscure, you know, metrics that they use in and, and that they put out there doesn't really mean anything. Like it's, it's not even brag worthy. Now, in, in, a, in a case where, where it's multi, a multiplayer game, yes, monthly active users are very important to a, to, a, uh, to a multiplayer game. You know, current, concurrent active users to a multiplayer game, yes, those metrics are very important because that's literally how games, multiplayer games stay alive. You need those numbers high for that game to keep going. A, game, a multiplayer game literally dies or lives based on its concurrent users. So, like, we don't know what the truth is, right? We don't. Hi-Fi Rush could, could have actually met all their metri met metrics and, and expectations. But we won't really know the truth because they won't release those numbers. And once again, I just think that's to their, their detriment. But... Is it so? I, I do think it might be possible that even though Xbox claims they don't care about sales, oh, uh, they don't care about hardware, uh, software sales or hardware sales. It's all about getting our games everywhere. You know, partnership with Samsung TV over over the cloud and all this. Oh, on your little handheld device, on your phone. I don't really buy that. That I think it's bullshit. There, there's no way you can convince me that. I'm not saying, like, I absolutely believe that Game Pass is their priority, but I think it's absolutely bullshit that they don't care at all how many games or, uh, or, har or hardware or ha hardware like Xboxes they sell. I, I just, that doesn't make sense. You think, you think they made these consoles just for them to sh sit on a shelf? No way. No way. They, they want to sell these because you can make, you can make the argument that, Every Xbox sold is a potential Game Pass subscription. So if you care about Game Pass, you have to care about Xbox. You have to. Because that's, that, yeah, it's on, it's on PC, of course, but it, that's still a subscription. So you have to care about it. That's why I don't be really be buying, oh, they don't care about the, the software sales or the hardware sales. It's all about, you know, player engagement bullshit. That's, that's, that's the one thing I don't believe. Those things are important too, but you'll never be able to convince me 
that player engagement numbers are more important than sales. Th only, only in a multiplayer live service game would that be true. But you cannot take player engagement numbers to the bank. You can't. You can't. I'm sorry. So that's why I'm just like, man, I don't know. Um, they denied it, but, uh, and you know, it was a stealth drop also. I should say, of course, we know it, it was a stealth drop. They didn't, they didn't promote it. Not like they probably would have promoted it anyway, because Xbox marketing, um, sucks anyway. But I, I, I will say, I think maybe it's possible that Xbox, even though they sell games in Game Pass and they care about the subscriptions going up, they may internally also still want a game to sell a certain amount. It's not going to be like uh, a high amount, but they've got to think like, okay, a certain amount of people are going to play this through Game Pass, but a certain amount of people also have to just buy this game straight out too. Just, you know, it, that I think that does make sense. So I, I don't know, man. Um, let me know what y'all think. I've talked too long. Rambled. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, hit hit. Hit the like button. Um, follow, follow me on Twitter. All that, all that good shit. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.